Honda Civic, when it was first launched in India about 15 years ago, was an absolute revelation. It was futuristic, it was very smart looking, very successful, and dare I say, it helped establish a segment in itself. But things have changed over the past decade and a half. India is no longer a sedan market, it's more of an SUV market. And with the 10th generation Civic worldwide, that is, Honda is trying to make a dent in the segment again. But the segment is small, it's shrinking. Can the Civic make a big change to the market? We drive it today to find out. As far as the exterior design goes, I think the Honda Civic is a pretty interesting product. Uh, first thing you notice is, of course, the big chrome nose. It's largely becoming a style statement of Honda products worldwide. And the Civic being a global product, it's no different. Uh, the alloys look interesting. You get 16-inch alloy on the lower trim versions, 17-inch alloys on the larger trim versions. We still don't know how many trim versions they'll be. That's something that Honda will reveal closer to launch next month. What we do know is it'll be offered with two engine options. The petrol will come with an automatic only and the diesel will come with a manual only. If you look at the profile of the car, it's got a coupe-like silhouette. You can see the sloping roof, but it's got a decent amount of headroom. And if you look at the rear of the car, it's, it's very reminiscent of the what I would think is the Honda Insight. You know, the Honda Clarity, the Honda Insight. It's also a family design language. Is it a beautiful looking car? I'm not so sure, but it is a car that will catch your eye. Like I said earlier, the Civic is a global product, so it's no surprise that the exterior looks, the interior design, the fit and finish, it all sort of is up to the global levels. I mean, it's a product that's sold very successfully worldwide, including the United States. And you get the typical Honda family look inside and out. So you get the seven inch touchscreen with the Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. Uh, the touchscreen actually works quite well. I love the feature that they have, which is the uh, left side display. So the minute you use the left indicator, there's a camera on the side, uh, on the outside mirror, which shows you if there's anything in your blind spot. I think that's really helpful and it actually works very, very well. It's, it's sort of, it's uh, something that makes you question why other car makers haven't thought of. Uh, Space-wise, the Civic is pretty good. Refinement-wise, I have to say it's remarkably good. We haven't been able to drive the petrol version of the car because of a shortage of time. But the 1.6 diesel is quite silent inside. There's uh, very little NVH. But I have to say, between the gear ratios and the engine's power delivery, it does feel a little underpowered. Uh, you really have to keep it on the boil, which basically means that unless you're above 2000 RPM, the car is slow. But above 2000 RPM, it moves very well. The ride is fantastic. The high speed stability is very good. There's little or no steering feel, but I think that's becoming more or less standard with the electric power steering that we're seeing today. Uh, how would I rate the Civic? I think. If you look at it from a comfort factor, if you look at it from the factor of uh, being driven around, it's a really good car. Um, strangely, I don't understand the logic behind this. We had a long discussion with the Honda officials last night. Uh, they're going to offer the petrol only with a CVT automatic, no manuals, and the diesel only with a manual, no automatics. I mean, that sort of, um, you know, is, is an interesting choice. It's something that I don't understand because I would think that to customers who drive a lot more uh, diesel manual or rather a diesel automatic might be more beneficial but I mean that's that's how it is um, the bigger problem I think the Civic has and that's the, the Honda officials claim that they're confident about the numbers they're gonna do the biggest problem that the Civic has is, is that 
Indians are no longer a sedan market, you know, it's it's an SUV market and the segment that the Civic is going to compete in with the Hyundai Elantra, with the Skoda Octavia, with the Toyota Corolla Altis is already shrinking. It's only down to about 12,000 units a year. So it will be interesting to see how the Civic performs because even if it becomes the biggest seller in its segment, you're still looking at only five, 600 units a month, which is still relatively very low, especially when you consider that cars like the Amaze sell about 10,000 a month. So I think the problem is not the product, it's a great product, it's very refined, I would like a little more power from the diesel engine, I would like more transmission options, both in petrol and in diesel, but the problem is more or less going to be whether there is enough space in the segment, whether there's enough customer interest in the segment to be a big seller. That for me is probably the biggest fight that the Sonda Civic faces not the competition as much, it's whether there is enough customer interest in the segment.